Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence demo on replay attacks with the HackRF1 with the Porta Pack. So in this video, I will show you guys how I took my car alarm remote and cloned the functionality of it onto the Porta Pack so that I can unlock and remote start my truck using just the Porta Pack. So before we jump in on how to do it, let's take a look at it in action. Okay, so I'm just going to replay the signal that we captured from the remote, and there you can see the door unlocks. Okay, so the reason we were able to transmit this signal here and have it unlock the truck is because this remote uses a static code. What that means is that every time you push this button, no matter how many times you push it, it's always going to generate the exact same signal. So all we have to do is capture that signal by being in range when somebody presses the button, and then transmit that signal on the same frequency and the doors will unlock. So how do we figure out what frequency that's at? Well, looking at the back of the remote, we can see the FCC ID here. If we take that and type it into FCCID.io, it'll bring up all the information about it. And we can see the first thing here is the frequency range of 305.3 to 306.3 megahertz. Sometimes this will be an exact frequency. In this case, it's a range. So we'll have to narrow down where the signal's at in the range. We'll use the HackRF1 to do that. Uh, quick note, there's tons of other really good technical information down here about the transmitter. So if you're looking something up on here, definitely dig through there. You also don't need the FCC ID to figure out the frequency. It's just a very tedious task. So let's jump over to the HackRF. Okay, so now we need to find the frequency at the center of the signal that comes out of the remote. And in order to do that, we're going to use the Porta Pack with the Havoc firmware. We're going to use this search close call function. We'll set the minimum to be 305.3, the max to be 306.3. We got that from the FCC page. Now I'll just click the button and we'll see that it lights up at 306.175 as the frequency. And if you look closely right here, you can actually see the signal on a little tiny scope there. But now we know we're at 306.175. So if we back out of here and go to capture, and we'll set this frequency here to 306.175. Now if I click the button, we can't see a whole lot going on, but if we go up to this rate here and start zooming in, um, as we get closer and closer, right around there at 3K, you can see that signal fly by. So that's the signal we're gonna capture. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna go down here to the record button. I'll press record, click, press record again, and that's it. Now we've captured the unlock signal. We'll go to replay open file, go all the way to the last file we made, and now let's go check out the truck. Okay, so now we'll just replay the signal that we captured and the doors unlock. So now for good measure, let's go capture the remote start signal. Okay, so back in the capture function, we already know the frequency and the rate, so I'm just gonna hit record, hit remote start, and hit record again, and now let's go try it. Okay, so now inside the truck, I will replay the remote start signal, and we'll see the accessories kick on, and there's the ignition. Okay, so at this point, I've successfully demonstrated how to capture and replay the unlock and remote start signals from my car alarm, but I don't want you guys to think that you can just run out, buy a Hack RF1, slap a Porta Pack on it, dump the Havoc firmware, and you're gonna go out there and start opening people's vehicles. Of all the car alarms that I've tested so far, this is the only one that was vulnerable to a replay attack because it uses a static code. So this is gonna be rare in anything that's halfway modern or has a halfway decent sense of security all of those kinds of devices are gonna implement a rolling code. So where else are we gonna see things that implement a static code? Well, old school garage door openers that use dip switches, these are setting a static code. So garage door openers that implement this type of dip switch setting, these are gonna be vulnerable to a replay attack. Uh, low end electronics like basic RC cars that use a very simple transmitter, those are gonna implement a static code and be vulnerable to replays. Uh, but for the most part, anything halfway modern and with a halfway decent sense of security is going to implement a rolling code that's significantly harder to compromise. So what I want you guys to take away from this video is if you're trying to secure something, definitely make sure that it has a rolling code. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun learning about radio signaling and making this video, implementing this attack. So plenty more content to come. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.